Well, here we have the Velman DVM 13 MFC2 frequency counter. If you search around on eBay and the internet, you will find this device available under a variety of labels. It is made in China and it has a crystal oven for the reference oscillator and the instruction book recommends that you leave it running for 20 or 25 minutes to stabilize in temperature before taking uh, really accurate readings. It's a, a mains powered device and on the back of it there is a mains voltage selector switch which rather implies that it has a linear power supply rather than one of these horrible switch mode devices so there's a praise be for that. The frequency counter will go from uh, very close to DC 0.01 Hz up to 2.4 GHz. It has two inputs, uh, input A for signals up to 50 MHz and input B for signals between 50 MHz and 2.4 GHz. And it has three measurement ranges which are selected by the function and the confirm uh, buttons there. So I'm going to show you a few measurements on, on the device now and uh, let you see how it works. First of all, I um, have a crystal oscillator here, which um, is set up for about 10 megahertz. So we'll use input A for that, since it's uh, below 50 megahertz. And this is range 2, which we select by pressing function twice and then confirm. And there we are. It's measuring 9.9999 megahertz, so pretty close to 10 megahertz. Uh, the gate time is variable, continuously variable with this knob here, and we can wind that up to about 10 seconds. And as the gate time increases, then the number of digits after the decimal point increases. So there we are, we've gained an extra digit now, and we are what is that, about 100 hertz below 10 megahertz, so uh, that's, that's not a bad result there. We'll try it on the audio range next. I have an audio signal generator here. Again, this will be input A, but this time we will select range 3, which is below 2 megahertz. And we we'll turn the gate time down so that we get a, a result. And there we are, 2.28 kilohertz. And if we wind that up, we will start to increase the number of digits, 2.289 kilohertz there. So it's measuring to 1 hertz. I think it will go a little bit uh, further than that if you wind the gate time up to 10 seconds. There we are, yes. So that's measuring 2.1 of a hertz, which um, is quite good, isn't it? So that's the, the very low frequency, audio frequency range. Let's try it on some RF signals now. Now I have a, a transceiver uh, here, which will put out a signal in the 144 megahertz region. Now input B has an input impedance of 50 ohms, therefore it is possible to plug a transmitter into the counter directly. Uh, however, we don't want to, uh, to blow the input, so I'm going to put some, some attenuators on. I'm going to put 30 dBs of attenuation in there. And we need to select range 1 for this, which is signals over 50 megahertz. We'll power up the transmitter. And if I key the transmitter, turn the gate time down 
so that we get a, a quick result. And there we are, 144.34 megahertz, which is pretty close to uh, what the transceiver display is saying. So uh, you can measure a frequency directly from, uh, from the transmitter there. And finally, we'll try a somewhat higher frequency. I have a television transmitter here, which operates in the 1250 megahertz region. And we'll try sampling that with uh, a small whip antenna Here it is, which is around about a quarter wavelength on the frequency that uh, we're looking at. And key up the transmitter. And there we are. 1248.958 megahertz. So that in a nutshell is this uh, little Chinese frequency counter, which I think makes a very good addition to any radio shack.